Hello, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Today I want to look at Wi-Fi extenders. You may know them as Wi-Fi boosters or Wi-Fi repeaters. Wi-Fi range extenders is probably the official name. I want to bust some of the myths, some of the misunderstandings about how they work and actually look at the details of what they achieve and how they achieve it. So if you want to find out more, please well, let me explain. Okay, to do this, we're going to need to look at several things. First of all, we're going to need to look at why you need a Wi-Fi range extender. Second, we need to know about how an actual Wi-Fi network identifies itself, and that's important, and we'll see why in a minute. And then we're going to need to look at how a Wi-Fi extender actually works, and then because of that, where's the best place to put it in your house to get the best results. Now, Wi-Fi, of course, is based on radio waves, and like all radio waves, they have a strength. Now the average Wi-Fi access point, your Wi-Fi router works at about 100 milliwatts, which is not a lot of power. So of course, as you get further away from the source, the distance increases, the signal strength drops off, and you'll get to a point where you can no longer pick up that signal. And there are other things that can cause the Wi-Fi signal to lose its strength, and that's basically obstacles, doors, windows, even big bits of furniture. Now, when the radio wave comes up to an obstacle, a couple of different things can happen. It can pass through it, and if it passes through it, it will have lost some of its power. It could get uh, reflected in a different direction, go away, get uh, scattered even, and of course, it can just disperse in the material itself and just not penetrate it uh, at all. Now, as I discussed in my previous video, the jargon busting video, you can get Wi-Fi on 2.4 gigahertz, on 5 gigahertz, and on 6 gigahertz with Wi-Fi 6E. Now, a 2.4 gigahertz signal can go a longer distance because it's better at passing through solid objects. A 5 gigahertz signal gets stopped easier by walls and doors and even big bits of furniture. However, a 5 gigahertz signal can actually give you higher data rates, higher bandwidth, whereas a 2.4 gigahertz signal gives you less, but it goes further. So you have a choice between range and speed, and it's often a balancing act. And the reason you might need a Wi-Fi extender is where you want to pick up Wi-Fi and you're too far away, or there are too many walls between where you are and where the access point is. And so that depends on the size of your house. If you're in a very small apartment, that probably isn't really an issue. If you're in a house, uh, if you're in a bigger building, then you're gonna have issues getting the Wi-Fi signal further and further away. Here in my house, we can basically get it all over the place, but as soon as you step outside, for example, if you wanted to use the Wi-Fi out on a balcony or out on a terrace, out in the garden, then the Wi-Fi signal disappears. So a place for a Wi-Fi extender is to extend that range of the Wi-Fi so you can get it in other places in the house. In my case, uh, out on a balcony or out on a terrace. Now, when you start up your phone and you search for a Wi-Fi network, you will see a list of Wi-Fi networks identified by some text, and that's called the SSID, the Service Set Identifier. And that text is what you set. You may have left it at the default that your access point provider, your telecommunications provider has set it to, but you can change it. You can change it to whatever you want, Gary's Wi-Fi or, or whatever you want like that. There are some limitations about size and so on, but basically it's a string that you set yourself. Now, because it's something you can set yourself, there's nothing stopping you from setting all the Wi-Fi's in your house to having the same SSID. Of course, if you think about it, if that was the only way the network was identified, it would be really confusing because when your smartphone or your laptop is trying to talk to the Wi-Fi and it's just using that SSID, it doesn't know who it's talking to. Is it talking to this Wi-Fi router, to that Wi-Fi router? You know, it, there would be lots of confusion. So there is a second piece of identification, which is what the machines used to identify it, not us as people. And you generally don't see this uh, in the Wi-Fi uh, listing. There are some tools you can get for Android and so on that will show it to you, but it's called the BSSID, the Basic Service Set Identifier, and it's basically the MAC address. Now, the MAC address is a unique address assigned by the manufacturer that each Wi-Fi access point, each smartphone, each laptop has, and that uniquely identifies it. So when the packets are flying around in the air, they have an address on them, where they're going to and where they came from. And that's not based on the SSID, that's actually based on the BSSID. So the actual smartphone can talk to the access point and the access point can reply with a unique address. And all the other packets that are flying around get ignored because they're not for that particular device. Now, if you do want a video on MAC addresses, do let me know in the comments below because they're quite interesting, 48 bits, they're, they're how they're assigned and so on could be interesting. Let me know and I'll think about making a video. Now, when you use a network extender, the idea is this, you 
set it up. And when you set it up, you tell it which network you want to extend, which means it has to be able to authenticate with that network. And then you move it to another room so that you can get further uh, Wi-Fi access. Now, the idea is that when you move from room to room with your smartphone, it picks the strongest Wi-Fi signal. Now, if it sees two uh, Wi-Fi networks with either the same SSID or similar SSIDs, at some point it will say, this one's better, and it will connect to the stronger one, which is meant to be the Wi-Fi extender, and then you get better connection between your device and the Wi-Fi extender, then of course the Wi-Fi extender still has to talk back to the original uh, to the original access point. And then as you move around the house, as you come back close to the original uh, access point, then the phone will swap again networks and that's how it's meant to work. Now, some phones are good at doing that. Some phones are a bit worse at doing that. They hang on to weaker signals because they say, well, at least I'm on this network. I might as well stay connected to it. They hang on a bit longer maybe uh, and things like that. And in fact, during my testing, I had to really be sure that the my test devices, the laptops and the smartphones I was using did actually change to the extender rather than lingeringly connecting to the original access point. Now, the key point to understanding network extenders, network range extenders, network repeaters, whatever you want to call them, is they create their own Wi-Fi network. They're not actually extending the original network or boosting it in any way whatsoever. They create their own Wi-Fi network. Now, the SSID may be the same or even similar with maybe, you know, underbar extension on the end of it, but actually it's its own Wi-Fi network and the BSSID is unique and it's for that Wi-Fi range extender. And so when your device connects to the range extender, it's getting to a new Wi-Fi network. Now, what the radio center does is that when it knows its job is just to receive that stuff on its own Wi-Fi network, repackage it up, change the addresses, so that it's now going back to the original access point. So it then retransmits. So its job is to receive, rewrite the packets, and then retransmit them. And then when the reply comes back, it receives that, rewrites the packets, and then retransmits them so it gets out to your uh, smartphone or to your laptop. Now, because of that, the Wi-Fi extender is actually doing twice the amount of sending and receiving that your phone is doing or that the original access point would be doing because it has to receive the information and then send it on again, receive it and send it on again. And because it's using one radio, and we'll talk more about multiple radios in a minute, but generally it's using one radio. So that radio is actually being split into doing its own Wi-Fi stuff and into sending the data onto the original access point. That's why the extender will actually be on the same channel and using the same frequency as the original network because it hasn't got time to switch the radio to different frequencies. You know, when you're talking about, you know, megabits of data going back and forth, hasn't got time to retune that radio. So in general, as a rule of thumb, a network extender is going to have half the bandwidth because it has to do twice the work. Now, of course, we do have uh, Wi-Fi extenders with multiple radios inside them. And I cover this in my previous uh, video. So you basically got this uh, MIMO, MIMO setup where you are able to use two or more radios, two or more antennas, that's the kind of the crude way of looking at it, to send and receive information. So in that case, the actual the Wi-Fi extender can receive on one radio and transmit on the other. And that does improve the bandwidth. In fact, I have an Honor Router 3, which I'm planning on doing a full review for, and that is able to act as a repeater as both a 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz. So in fact, on that one, you can connect to it on the 5 gigahertz and it retransmits back to the original uh, access point over 2.4 gigahertz using two different radios. So you do get improved bandwidth. And this will also come important when we look at mesh networking, which is one of the future videos I'm planning on doing. So what we do now is look at some testing that I've done, which actually demonstrates in a very practical way the problems and the benefits of using a network extender. So here we see a kind of a pseudo map of my house. It's not actually the map of my house, but it's a pseudo map of my house. Now, as you can see in the bottom left hand corner, we have my office, which has got a Wi-Fi network in it. Now, if I connect to that, Best case scenario, I did these tests many, many times to get the best results. Let's say that the baseline number is 100%. I get 100% bandwidth using a smartphone connecting to that router. It doesn't matter what the actual number is because what we're talking about is the difference, the variance of that as we move around the house. Now, if I have a network extender properly configured to boost that network, to repeat that network, to extend that network, and I have it in the same room, then if I run my uh, performance tests on that, I'm actually at 
So you might find that a bit shocking. So here I'm in the same room, not very far away. There's no real problems with going through walls or obstacles. We're all here in the same room. And actually just by using the extender, my bandwidth has gone down to 58%. Now, why is that? In this particular case, it's because I've created lots of interference. Now, remember, both of these Wi-Fi points are all using the same uh, frequency because the Wi-Fi extender doesn't have time to switch frequencies. So it's on exactly the same channel as my original access point. And as I use it, the room is being flooded with 2.4 gigahertz, channel six, whatever, uh, radio waves, and they're all interfering with each other. And so the bandwidth just goes down to 58%. In fact, you'll notice now in the next test, when we move to another room, it actually goes up because we're reducing that interference. And now we're introducing a second problem, which is the distance away from the original uh, Wi-Fi access point. So if we move across the hallway into what here on this diagram is the bedroom. Now, here's the interesting point. If I connect to the original access point, I get 73%. So that's just showing you the drop off of going through two walls, going a few meters uh, away from the original access point. I'm now at 73%. Now, if I plug in the uh, network extender into that room and then connect to the network extender, the bandwidth is now down to 70%. So this is really an interesting thing to note. First of all, the Wi-Fi extender has to itself connect to the original access point. So if my smartphone could only get there at 73%, that's kind of the number that it's gonna get bandwidth wise when it connects back to the Wi-Fi, uh, original Wi-Fi network. And of course it's got antennas, maybe it's able to have better reception because of that. But overall, it's not gonna get any better than what you have using another piece of Wi-Fi equipment because they're both talking using the same method, Wi-Fi, back to the original access point. And then on top of that, any gain that it has because it's got big antennas on it is lost because it's doing double that work as I explained. It's trying to receive and then send and then receive back the reply and then send that again. So you notice that actually using my smartphone, I could actually get 73%, but using the Wi-Fi extender, I get 70%. So again, in this situation, the Wi-Fi extender is not helped in any way whatsoever. Now, if we now move down to the far end of the house and I tried to connect using my smartphone back to the original Wi-Fi, I'm at 31%. So again, the distance and the walls has reduced that signal until I only get 31% of the original bandwidth. But again, we see the same situation. If I connect in the Wi-Fi extender, then when I try to do a test through that, I'm at 26%. So the bottom line is this, if you can connect to the network using your original device, you're not gonna get any better performance by using a network extender because it's also connecting to your Wi-Fi using exactly the same methodology. It's using Wi-Fi and it's trying to talk to your access point. So again, you have to be very careful about where you place these things. However, all is not lost, it does have a purpose, a Wi-Fi extender, and that's what I'll show you now. So if I go outside now, leaving the Wi-Fi extender in that end room where we were getting 26%. Now outside, my smartphone has no connectivity to the original uh, access points too far away, up the other end of the house, too many walls, can't get there. But my smartphone can connect to the Wi-Fi extender and it can get several bars. It can get good connectivity, but the overall bandwidth is now down to 16%. And so, of course, that makes sense. If the Wi-Fi extender can only get 26% where it's situated, then anything that I then go further away from it is gonna make that signal drop down my connection to the Wi-Fi extender. So it's always gonna be a fraction of 26%. The best I could get would be 26% if there was 100% uh, availability between my device and the network extender. I went outside, there was a wall to pass through. So now my device, my smartphone is talking to the extender and the extender then talks to my original access point and I'm getting 16% of the original bandwidth. However, I'm getting Wi-Fi connection. It might be quite low, but I am getting Wi-Fi connection. If I just use my smartphone, I couldn't connect to that original access point. So as you can see, picking where you uh, put in your Wi-Fi extender is important because on the one part, it has to be able to connect a good connection to the original access point. If it's too far away, if it's too weak, then that's gonna cripple your bandwidth. It's not gonna get any more bandwidth because it can't physically talk to it over the Wi-Fi. And then of course, secondly, you talking to the Wi-Fi extender, if again, it's got the same Wi-Fi problems, if you go through walls, if you go outside, if you've got you know, big furniture in the way, then it's gonna interrupt that signal. So you're always gonna get a fraction of whatever the Wi-Fi extender can achieve 
at that point. Now, of course, there are other ways of solving this problem. Uh, mesh networking is one of them. I've got these really nice audience mesh network units. So I'm going to do a full review of those. And they are tri-bands. So there's three different radios in there. And that solves some of the problems we've been talking about. And of course, you could use a wired Ethernet between the access point and the, uh, the extending access point or a second access point. Uh, and we can look at that. If you think that's interesting, do let me know and maybe I'll think about doing a video about that. One person said in the comments about power line adapters. Again, that's a good way of solving that problem. Maybe I'll also do a video about that. Okay, so what have we learned? We've learned that Wi-Fi signals are transmitted at 100 milliwatts and therefore their signal strength goes down the further away you get and if you go through more obstacles. You can have dead patches because of that around your house, around your apartment. You can use a network extender, but the key is that a network extender creates its own new Wi-Fi network. It's not extending the existing network, it's its own new Wi-Fi network and then it acts as a kind of a, kind of a junction. It receives in one thing and then sends it back to the original point, which means it's communicating with the original access point also over Wi-Fi. And so if the Wi-Fi signal is bad at that point, then the extender has bad Wi-Fi at that point and it can't connect to the access point. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And it's best not to rely on the recommendation algorithm, better to subscribe to the channel and even hit that bell notification icon. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.